Hello. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hey, pretty good. All right. So, uh, without further ado, I'm just going to jump right into a um, little algorithms question. If you're up for it. Sure. Um, what uh, the code isn't actually going to run um, as as I have envisioned it, but um, it still might make sense to use like a real language. So if uh -huh. you want to pick one of the languages that they support here. Um, sure. All right, I've done Python. Python. Okay, excellent. So um, let me know if you've, uh, if you've seen this question before. Uh -huh. uh, but the idea is that um, you're going to be given a, uh, a dictionary of words that uh -huh. are not English words. They are words in some magical um, other language uh -huh. that uh, orders their letters differently than we do. Okay. And so you're trying to uh, to deduce what the order of their letters are in their language, given that you're getting a list of words that are sorted alphabetically in there. So uh, I'll give you a hint, just a just an example here. So if their okay. alphabet is the letters um, B F G Q. Mm -hmm. And you get a list of words that are, and, and these words are sorted in the, in this magical language. Okay. So um, there's, uh, there's a couple different parts to this question, but I just want to make sure before we get started that like you understand the, the, the basic concept. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So um, the kinds of things that you can tell from this list, for example, um, is, you know, if you look at the first letters, for example, obviously, uh, like B comes before F comes before G. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell that just by like looking at the yeah. ones, um, but then after that, it gets a little bit, um, a little bit tougher. You have to figure out well, where does the Q go? Mm -hmm. um, and you can see, for example, that like F B Q comes before F Q F. Yeah, yeah. So you know that that kind of gives you some some hints about about where it all is. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the first step is that um, I'd like you to build a graph that mm -hmm. has these relations in it. Mm -hmm. So essentially, um, the graph will have nodes where, like the, I guess, um, I'm doing it the other direction, um, where the nodes will just point to another node that it is in in front mm -hmm. of. Yeah. And let's just say that we have a uh, class G for graph. Mm -hmm. uh, and it will have methods um, uh, like add and C1 and C2. Uh, these are the letters that um, that you have. So you can add like if you said add oh, see, PF, sure. yeah, then you would it. add that. Um, and that's basically, a, that's an edge. Mm -hmm. um, you can remove uh, mm -hmm. that edge. Mm -hmm. um, we'll say outgoing. Uh, so that's like all the outgoing edges sure. from a given one and incoming. Mm -hmm. All right, so given all of this, uh, can you start by coding up something that will um, make this graph mm -hmm. uh, and encode all of the um, uh, the the relationships between the letters? Uh -huh. Sure. Um, so yeah. So I mean, 
the I guess the the thing the rules are just generated by if you look at the characters. So if we look at the first character, we we are basically just given b is greater than f, f is greater than g. Uh, we can also tell that g b is greater than g as well, mm -hmm. um, just by looking at um, like if 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 all characters before the given character are the same between two words, then we know that um, the next character we can use to order the two characters. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, so let me just think real quickly about the most efficient way to do this. Um, so I think the, I think the um, let's see. Let's think quickly about this. This will generate a lot of edges. Uh, that's fine. It's part of the requirement. Um, Uh, okay. Let's see, see, see. So, okay, I can say G goes growth. Um, and then W word list. Um, we just want to. I think the best way to do this is recursively um, and just pass it in graph and a list of words to process. Uh, so let's say process words. Um, sub list and the graph. Um, and basically this function will take in a bunch of words um, where the, uh, should I, should I pass in, um, can either pass in the index or I can pass in a, a subword and it's going to be better in this case to pass in an index and just more efficient. Um, so this, this, this will, um, this adds all words. Uh, all edges for the words in the list um, where all characters before index are the same. Um, so the base case would be to process words of entire word list graph uh, g and zero. Um, and the passing of this sublist isn't really efficient. Uh, it's probably um, better to just pass in the original list and a list of indexes um, because string copying is expensive. Um, but I will do that um, later. I was going to make this simple first. Um, so let's see here. Uh, so we can just generate an ordering from this. So um, uh, uh, I'm going to write this kind of inefficiently first, and I can go back and optimize that if it's that okay. Makes sense. Sure. I know I need. So basically, here I just want now I have an ordering that I know. I just want to add edges um, from every character 
to the characters in the rest of the list. Okay. Um, so um, I don't want to I don't want to duplicate add edges though. So um, I'll want to check for that. Well, um, I mean, you you can assume that uh, adding the same edge twice is a no op. That's fine. Okay, sure. Um, in that case, I don't even need line 35 then, though it makes it slightly more efficient if the add function. Uh, I, I think I don't even bother. Uh, the add function is going to do this. I can just make that part of the. So this adds all the the uh, all the orderings we know from this, and then we need to also uh, recursively add all the things where the first letter is the same. Um, so let's see here. We can mix a bunch of sublists. Uh, so we can say uh, same uh, uh, words by first letter. for Way you iterate over dictionary essentially give it give it to this is this right? Uh, when you iterate over a dictionary, it just gives you the keys. But okay. if you um, if you say words by first letter dot um, value. values, or you could say items if you want the keys and values. Okay, yeah. I think I just want values. Um, Um, so this will recursively do that. I think that's right. Okay. Uh, so let's let's work through a couple. Can you uh -oh. can you just walk through how this is going to work for like a couple of these um, these little strings? It doesn't, or even you could you could make up even shorter strings than the one that I that I've given. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll just use the null alphabet. Just it's easy to verify. Yeah. 
Um, Uh, let, me, let me just like verify before I run through the whole thing. Let me just make sure it makes sense to me. I think in line 51, you meant to say range here. Oh, yeah, I think range. Yeah, I think this, uh, let me just, I'm just talking. I think this is actually right, though. The algorithm looks brightish to me. Um, I can just, I'll, just, I'll, I'll do a double check, though. Okay, so let's say we have this list. Uh, so we'll iterate through all the words in the in this list. Um, and so for this first one, uh, we called with index of zero. Uh, oh, I need to I need to check the ending point. Uh, do I? Uh, I need I need to verify that the index is not too high. Are all the words going to be the same length? No. Okay. Um, if it is greater than index is one and all the words are two, we still need some. All right, this is just the bounce check, whatever. Okay, yeah, yeah this is right. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start with this. Um, so we add A, A, A. I should make sure that I don't add an edge here. Um, so this will add AAA, and then we'll also um, add words by first letter of A, um, and that will have all the words um, because they all have the same letter, first letter. Mm -hmm. um, and then so the next iteration, or the, the recursive function here, mm -hmm. um, is going to be called on the basically the same list with an index of now of one, mm -hmm. um, and still an empty graph, which is fine. Um, and then this will have A, B, C, um, and which will be all, so the ordering will have A, B, C. Uh, so it'll be A, B, C here, mm -hmm. um, which is good. Um, it will then, so it will add um, A goes to B, um, A goes to C, and um, and then the next thing I will be one. It'll say B goes to um, C. Um, that should be it. So a question I have here. Um, so you're uh -huh. adding A to C. Mm -hmm. um, is that necessary for um, and like it is, is it? Is that piece of information necessary to add, or can that be deduced by something else? Um, I mean, no, not really. Um, I was just adding the, the complete graph um, because we know that because by um, what's it called? I don't I don't remember the name of the rule, but um, because because we have A to B and B to C, we don't need A to C. Okay. Because we're so, eventually going to be doing like a topological store on this. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you, you see where I'm going with this. Um, yeah. I think transitivity is the word you're looking for. Yeah. Um, so if we, so A to C, as you said, is kind of like redundant information there. Mm -hmm. um, so how about we get rid of that because that'll sort of speed things up a bit and, and make sure. it so it's a bit smaller. Um. Uh. 
Um, Let me just think about that pretty quickly. Yeah, that should be right. Okay. So, how many copies are we making here of this list? Yeah, so I guess that was the other thing I was going to do. Um, so, really, what we should be doing is we should just be passing in. Um, Another list of um, the sublist. So we should have a main list of words, and we should really just be passing in indexes um, for the second thing. Uh, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so instead of um, appending these things, we, the actual list, we can just append the index. Um, we'll want to do. Uh, there's a better way to do this. There's like, uh, I forget the Python way to do this. I can just do it the simple way. correctly anymore. Um, I would want to do yeah. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. All right. So we have lists of so those sub indexes are indexes into the word list. Mm -hmm. And and what are you passing? Wait, so hold on a second. This is missing a parentheses, I think. Oh, yes, you're right. Um, okay, so this is the range. So this is the sub indexes. So this is basically saying the entire list. Uh -huh. Uh, and that's the index. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then the next sub indexes is going to be this words by first letter. Oh, that's this list letter. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and the values are that. Okay. All right. That looks good. Um, okay, so I think you've already uh, you've you've looked in the crystal ball and realized where the next step is in all of this, and you even mm -hmm. said uh, topological sort. So um, sounds like you're ahead of the game there. <laughs> so um, uh, that that is the next step. So given this graph which you've just made, mm -hmm. uh, can you pull out the letters in now alphabetical order? Mm -hmm. Sure. So I guess the easiest way to do this is just to find the um, the the node that has no incoming edges, remove that, and then remove all the edges um, from that node, and then recursively do that, or uh, probably iteratively. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, 
uh, to go to like, um, I probably want to like store the number of edges to each node um, because otherwise I'm going to have to loop through the entire array and I can just like put this all into a heap. Oh, right. I guess uh, I did leave out one thing you're probably going to need. Um, yes. Um, yeah, so so here I'm going to be, need to recursively get the, the node with, oh, actually this isn't it. I don't, I don't even need to do that. Okay. Um, let me just do this. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, so I need to, I need to find the one with with the zero edges first. So let me just do that. Or n and grab nodes. If n dot incoming. Need to find the first node that has zero edges. Mm -hmm. um, I'll do that first, um, and then while we still have, uh, can I is can I get like a is empty function on the graph or? Um, sure. Okay. Cool. Your your wish is my command. Yay! Let's do that. Um, so. I guess like, I don't even, I could not even need that actually. It's probably not necessary, but I can use it anyways. Um, so I could actually just check to see if the zero node is not, which is probably safer because. Want to output a list? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Uh, the notes has like a value. Um. So, as I was imagining it. These are actually just uh, these are just characters it's going to give you back, or strings of length one, I suppose. Oh, okay, sure. So it's there's sort of like this. It's the ID for the for the sure. Sure. Uh, you know. sure. Um, so if there are ever multiple. Um, Zero nodes. It means that so if, there ever, if you ever remove a node and you find that there are multiple nodes that now have zero edges going to it, it means that the answer is not well defined. Mm -hmm. um, so I will. Uh, what do you want me to do in that case? Error or just pick one? Uh, just pick one arbitrarily. There's a. Okay. There, yeah, that's exactly right. It's it's not unique. Um, it uh, you know sometimes you have more. You you might have more letters than you have words. No way mm -hmm. to tell in that case. So okay. just one of the possible um, uh, correct see. order. Okay, um, I'll need to store the li a list of zero nodes then.
Uh, I need to remove the top element. Does remove in Python return the element you remove? Um, uh, from the list. I can just, I don't need to assume that. I can just, okay, that's right. Um, yeah, so remove actually, uh, I don't believe that it returns, no, I think it just returns a, a null. It just, it's, so okay. um, remove actually is probably not what you want because remove um, looks for the, uh, the character and remove oh, okay. that from the list. So I think what you want is pop. Oh, okay, there's a pop method. Yeah, and it's funny because it's it it basically removes the the element at the given position, so it's not really like pop in the stack kind of sense. <laughs> but well. So oh wait, wait. So pop takes a function, takes an index. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, it's 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 funny. The the naming is a little bit weird, but um, yeah. Yeah. Does it, so does pop actually return the element too, or do I need to? Does, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I had to remind myself. I'm just looking at the <laughs> Python docs right now. <laughs> uh -huh. So yeah, it's a funny, it's a funny one. Where was I? Very good. It's very good. Cool. Um, so, really quickly, what uh, what is the runtime of this uh, this whole process here? Mm -hmm. Sure. So the whole alphabet is pretty simple. This um, should be. Let's see. Uh, so we do a pass over it, over all nodes. That's O of n, um, and then we do remove, and that's going to remove. Uh, it's, remove is going to be called once for. Uh, every edge, so that'll be O of number of edges. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. Um, the total possible number of edges is equal to. Um, so that that's, that would be the case where you have. You actually have every single. Um, every single it, it would be, it would be this, the original loop I had where it was i times j. Mm -hmm. um, and you have the entire alphabet in there. Yeah. Um, and so if we say the length of the alphabet is, um, uh, say, y, uh, because it doesn't sound like n. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so we would say, um, that's of the O of y to y, uh, O of e equals O of y times y, where y is the number of, is the number of uh, letters in the alphabet. Um, or at least the number of letters that we see of the alphabet in the words given. Um, um, let's say the process words function. Um, so we have i in range zero to sub indexes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so I guess the worst case scenario is every single word is the same, mm -hmm. um, and they're all the entire alphabet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That would be a pretty bad case. <laughs> um, so in that case, we're going to do this function and then do it 
again over and over uh, equal to uh, number of words times the number of letters. Is, is that right? Let me, I'm not, I'm not totally confident on that. Um, let me think about that. So the length of the input is going to be the length of the total words every single time. Um, the work we do is going to be, the, the number of times it will, it will, it will uh, recursively call itself is is y. Oh, we have n times y so far. And the work done per function is um, all right, right, so y and the work done per function is we go over each word and we do a constant of work. Um, this doesn't seem actually seem like the worst case scenario. Um, so at, at the very least, it's at least n times y. Where n is the length of the word? Yeah, uh, or, or y is the length of alphabet. Um, n is length of word list. Uh, oh, oh, you're actually right. It should be the length of the longest word, not the length of the alphabet. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, I didn't assume that every character was unique for some reason. Um, But I'm, not, I'm just trying to uh, prove to myself that this is actually the worst case. Um, so if we take words by first letter, uh, there's like a um, I think this is like okay. So okay. So actually, the rule we know is that we only process each character once. So this is right. This is right, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because okay. So the reason I know this is true is because we wouldn't, we're never going to compare this the same character twice or more than two times, I guess. If that makes sense. So I know mm -hmm. it's the length of word times the longest the length of the longest word. All right. Okay, so we have the length of the list, we have the length of the longest word, and we have the number of letters in the alphabet. So how do yeah. these, how do we combine those two? Um, I mean, I guess the simplest way is to combine them first. Um, but the length of the longest word is uh, strictly larger than the length of the, um, or it is, it is in the worst case, it's strictly larger than the number of characters in the alphabet. Um, the longest word is longer than the number of letters in the alphabet? Uh, if, if we think about the asymptotic runtime. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, so like the in, long... in our case, in our case that I gave above, the alphabet is four letters and the longest word is three. Sure, sure. But like, so I guess, I guess asymptotically, it, it, the the longest word it can be bigger than the 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 length of the alphabet. Oh, I see what you're saying. So yes, yeah. the longest word certainly could be longer. And the length of like, the word is unbounded. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I, I guess like in in the in the cases where like the runtime is really bad, I'd expect like that to dominate over over the number of characters. But I guess like um strictly speaking, like you could have just some them if you if you don't do anything smart about that. No. No, that's it. That's it. Okay. All right, excellent. Very well done. Very well done. Um yeah, like uh it it sounds like you almost knew the the problem from before or like you definitely knew a lot of the concepts, which was excellent. Um, yeah. I only have like a tiny little um, uh, little suggestion. It's quite minor, but mm -hmm. um, it can kind of help make your um, uh, the code just look a little bit cleaner and 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 a bit easier to follow, especially in this kind of um, setting. So mm -hmm. there's a few sort of tricks with Python that um, 
uh, especially having to do with if statements and while statements, like what evaluates to true and what evaluates to false. And sure. um, it can be, I mean, it's, it's a matter of style for sure, but um, I think in general, people do like the style where you are sort of um, minimalistically showing what, what's happening. So for example, if you look at this uh, up at the top, uh, line 43, if length of m that incoming is zero, Mm -hmm. So actually, that is exactly the same um, statement as if m dot incoming. So if so, in in Python, a an expression that um, results in a list or mm -hmm. a set or any or a dictionary, anything with a size, if that mm -hmm. size is zero, then it evaluates to false. And so it makes it kind of like a little bit cleaner to look at. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with this while loop here, like while length of zero nodes is greater than zero. That's actually exactly the same um, statement as this, mm -hmm. while zero nodes. Um, another thing is that uh, the range operator um, uses zero as its default, like first argument. Mm -hmm. So you could just say range length. I mean, obviously these are these are small things, but um, mm -hmm. it can it uh, it's a little bit more idiomatic. For example, to to say like range of some number, um, and in some cases, I think that just showing um, like taking advantage of some of these Python um, like Boolean coercions uh, it does make the code a little bit cleaner and and really shows like very idiomatic kind of kind of Python. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, other than that, um, very well done, very quick, um, correct solutions, the whole thing. So very impressed. Cool. Yeah, that was fun. All right. Well, um, then uh, good luck with uh, with all the rest of your uh, your interviewing endeavors. Cool. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thanks for talking to you. Bye. Bye. -bye.